Hey everybody, welcome to T-Roy Cooks. I appreciate you joining us. Today is the third and final installment in my test series that I'm doing on the Weber Smoky Mountain. It's a hot debate going around whether you need to use sand or water in your water pan for your Weber Smoky Mountains. I'm hoping to help answer that question for my fans. Appreciate all of the feedback over the previous two tests that I've done. And some of you asked for a third test. Quite a few of you actually. Including Russ Jones from Smoky Ribs. Y'all go check him out, man. Uh, appreciate the request, Russ, along with the rest of you that requested this. What, what they're wanting to see is me add water to the sand. See if that makes a difference. And we're still keeping uh, water in the other Weber Smoky Mountain that James is letting me borrow. You know, James from Amum and Claimum Smokers. Man, if y'all hadn't seen James's channel, hope you go check him out up here. He joined me for that very first test that we did. But we're doing a third test today. This is the final one I'm going to do, folks. After this, you make your own mind up or do your own testing. Um, I got the other, other cooks I need to be doing, though, okay? So I appreciate all the feedback. My charcoal is getting ready right now. Today we're cooking some flanken-style ribs that I got from my local HEB. We're going to try out a, a, a rub that I just refreshed, actually. I, was, I had run out. Y'all seen me use it in the past. But I'd run out, and the company sent me some more. So I'll be showing that to you here in just a second. Again, we've got uh, 200 charcoal briquettes unlit in each of the Weber Smoky Mountains. I've got 36 charcoal briquettes that are being lit in chimneys as we speak. We're fixing to combine all that. We're going to throw some more oak wood on there, three chunks per Weber Smoky Mountain. And I'll bring you back just here in a second after I put the charcoal in. We'll be right back, folks. All right, folks, as you can see, the lit charcoals are right in the center. I'm using the minion method again. I've got three, char uh, three oak pieces of wood there, chunks. And the same on this, three of them. And one of my fans suggested I put the wood more towards the center because the, the meat's still cold and it'll get more smoke instead of the cold, the chunks being out towards the edge. By the time the charcoals reach out to the edge to light the, to light the chunks of wood, your meat's already past 140, so it's not gonna absorb a whole lot of smoke, but I'll go ahead and get this going here. Bring you right back, folks. Hey, this is James's Weber Smoky Mountain. Again, I've lined the uh, water pan with foil and we're just putting water Oh, about three quarters of the way up. And this is my Weber Smoky Mountain with the sand in it. Again, just regular sand, folks. The same amount I used on all the other cooks. I'm just going to put water with the sand. That's all I'm doing. Now, one thing that you could do, I'm just going to take this sand and pour it out in my yard later. So I'm not worried about, you know, about any of this. We'll check and see if the sand still has water in it after the cook. And again, we'll check on the charcoal. But what you could do, Cover the sand with some uh, some some heavy duty foil, and you could uh, then put water on top of the foil. Or another thing that you could do, in just a second here, I'll get her about three quarters of the way full up here. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up pretty close to the top because that sand's gonna absorb a lot of heat. And I'm gonna get my hand messy here in just a second, folks. What I was gonna say, you could do. Leave the sand covered with foil and then put your one of these aluminum pans in here and fill this with water and just sit it on top of the foil, on top of the sand. That would work great as, as well. In fact, I almost did this. But the request that I had specifically said mix water with the sand. So that's what we're doing. See if I can mix some of this in there. That's hot, baby. Woo! All right, we ain't going to do that. There you go. That's about as good as I'm going to get, folks. I ain't gonna burn my fingers like that. All right, let's put the uh, grill grate on here. We'll get these up to 250 or so. And we'll be back here in just a minute, folks. All right, everybody. Again, I'm using the smoke, just like I did in the last test, and uh, they're past 225 on both Weber Smoky Mountains. Again, the top one is mine with the sand and water. Bottom one is James's Weber Smoky Mountain with just plain water. So we're 228, 234. Mine's 228. Anyway, let me show you what we're working with. I got. I'm using the same smoke like I did last time with one probe it's got two probe ports so one probe going to one Weber Smoky Mountain one going to the other that's how that's how the situation is on that got something else for you too tell you what folks you know here in the US this is like a regular bottle of uh, Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce my good friend and subscriber Gordon Farmer he was kind enough to send me some bottles of Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire from England from the UK folks y'all check this out Side by side comparison. There we go. Hopefully I got that sitting straight. Anywho, looks pretty much the same size bottle. 
But uh, I can't wait to try this out. We're going to use this. Thank you, Gordon, for sending this to me. We're going to use some of this on these flanking ribs. And let me show you the rub that we're going to put on here. This is a uh, company out of Allen, Texas. They're actually a barbecue team. It's Big Country Barbecue. This is their bovine dust. And I've, they've got another rub that they also sent me. So I appreciate you guys for hooking me up with that. But if you're near Allen or if you want to go check them out online, uh, Big countrybarbecue.com big country barbecue spelled out I'll put the link down below in the description box just just hit show more folks anyway I took some of this it's wonderful stuff I have used it before I think I just don't brisket or something anyway I put it in the shaker let me show you what we're gonna do so I'm gonna give this a good shake this Worcestershire sauce y'all know I like to put a little Worcestershire on my beef that's all we're gonna do you can put oil on here if you rather, however you want to do it. But these are some nice looking, nice looking flanks, uh, flanking steaks, or flanking ribs, <laughs> beef ribs, that uh, my butcher Cliff over at HEB hooked me up with. Man, thank you, Cliff. I appreciate that, brother. I'm going to hit them with a little bit of this bovine dust. And this is a mixture of uh, salt and garlic and black pepper. Um, and it's got some other spices. Man, it smells terrific. And again, I know this is good stuff right here, folks. I'll get you some of this. Gonna put a nice coating on all the sides here, except for the back. The back's just, uh, I mean, y'all check this out. You don't see that? Nice thick meat on there, but the back's still got the uh, skin on. I'm not gonna mess with the back. I'm just gonna coat the three sides. We'll meet you right back. All right, gang, James's smoker is up to 250, so I'm gonna close some of the vents down just a little bit. So again, we've got two vents cracked, just barely cracked on his, and the third one's closed on the bottom. Top vent's wide open. Top vent on mine's wide open. Mine's still coming up to temp. As you can see, 251 on James is 237 on mine. So that's where we're at. I'll keep mine. I'm gonna try to keep them around 250 like I did last time. Let's go ahead and throw these uh, flanking style ribs on there. Folks, if y'all hadn't tried flanking style ribs, you got to give that a try. That's becoming my favorite style of beef ribs. That's good stuff. As you can see, I got the, the meat probe, temperature probe for the uh, smoke, right dead in the center. That's where I had it last time, too. On both of them, on both uh, Weber Smoky Mountains. And we're just going to lay these in there just like so. Is that right? I got, I got six of them. That's what I got. I got six of these ribs. So we're going to put three on each one. That's what we're going to do. I was thinking I had eight for some reason. All right, let me get these other three thrown on James's. We'll be right back, folks. All right, gang, it's been like three hours. We're still holding pretty close to 250 on both of these, if y'all can see that. Let's pull these off. I'll pull the lids off anyway, not pull the meat off. I just probed it like a half hour ago, and it's about 156. But uh, as you can see, it's kind of drying up just a little bit. So about the two-hour mark, I started spritzing these. And I did not spritz any of the meat that I cooked on the prior two test videos but I think these need it and I've got a mix of uh, what is it apple cider vinegar and acai pomegranate juice in here so I'm just uh, spritzing these like every 30 40 minutes something like that and uh, just let them keep going and again we're about hour three so I'm gonna do the same to James's over here and uh, we'll check back when we get closer to being done Hey guys, we're still maintaining real close to 250 as you can see right there. It's been seven hours. Let's go ahead and pull these off. I'll show you what they're looking like. And I've been spritzing them again like uh, from the second hour. I think hour two I started spritzing them. But uh, they're, they're, they're feeling really tender. Last time I probed them they were like 196. And that was about 30 minutes ago. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these off. We're going to, uh, hang on, let me get you up here. We're gonna go ahead and pull these off. We're gonna tend them with some foil for about a half hour. We'll cut into them. We'll let you know how they taste. Be right back. Hey right, guys, this is my Weber Smoky Mountain with the sand in it, as you can see. I just wanted to see how much of the water evaporated. It looks like a nice amount evaporated out of here. It's still a little bit soggy, but it's not bad. I mean, a lot of that water did evaporate out of there. What I'm gonna do is take 
both the midsections off. We'll show you how much coals we have left, like we did last time. We'll be right back. All right, gang, here you go. That one had the sand in it. You can see we still, I got about the same amount that I did last time. And James's actually is looking like it's got more than it did last time, but not sure. Uh, but anyway, that's the difference. This had water, that had sand. And as far as James's, uh, let me see if I can show you real quick the water panel on James's because this it's got like about a maybe a third of what it started out with. Well, there you go. I don't, I'm not sure you can actually see that, but it it really doesn't have a whole lot. And this it's kind of leaning towards the back, so it makes it look like it's got more. But on this end over here on the the tight side, it's at the bottom. So that's all the water right there. So again, it's not very much left. That's how we wind it up, folks. Let's go check out those uh, flanking style ribs. Hey right, guys, this one with this toothpick in it, this is the one that had the sand and water mix. And as you can see, we've got quite a bit of pullback. You can really see it on this side over here. And this one, it's got pullback on this other side here. So I'd say they're pretty even on the pullback on the bones. As you can see, they, uh, they both look almost equal. I mean, really, really, they look they look pretty be pretty equal. So let's cut into this one first. The one that was cooked with the sand. Let's see. Let's just take a look at the middle here. Let's see how this looks. There we go. Okay. There we go. Still feels really, really, really moist. I don't know. I don't see a lot of juice running out of it, but it's really tender. All right, so that's the one with the sand. Let's cut one out of the middle here. That's uh, the one from the water cooker. There we go. It's over here. Let's see what this one looks like. I apologize, the sun's already set, so it's getting pretty dark out here. Tell you what, folks, let's give these a try. Let's see what they uh, what they taste like. All right, everybody, let's check out these flanking style ribs. See which one's better. This one, this is the one that was on the sand and the water, okay? This one is the one that was on just the water on James's Weber Smoky Mountain. And as you can see, Gotta love these G30s, man. It's seriously dark out here. Look over here, folks. Y'all see over here? That's my uh, my landscape lights. They already come on, because it's dark out here. <laughs> so I'm glad you can still see me. Gotta love these G30s. Anyway, uh, Russ, Russ Jones, Smoky Ribs. This one's for you, babe. Here you go. Mm. That's almost falling off the bone. That's pretty tender. Mmm. That rub's good, y'all. My God. Forgot about how good that rub was. That bovine rub. You need to check them out. Check the description box down below. Mmm. Got a lot of pepper kick. Alright, so that's that one. It's got moisture, but it's a little bit dry. Let's let's check out this one right here. And the other the other test that I did, I didn't spritz, I didn't rub, I didn't uh, sauce, I didn't mop any of the meat on the previous two tests. But these ribs look like they were drying out, so I did spritz them, as y'all saw. I started about hour two, went all the way up until about half hour four, pulled them off. But let's check these out. That's the one that was on water on James's Weber Smoky Mountain. Thanks again, James. Wish you were here, boy. Flavor is identical. This is where I wish Karen was here. Because I swear this one is more tender and more juicy. And I had my butcher cut these for me, so I know they came from the flame, the same rack of ribs. Okay, so 
it's not like a difference in the meat. These are from the same rack. Let's try that again. I don't know. That was pretty tender. Hmm. Okay. Now the one with the water. It's fun testing these for y'all. <laughs> you couldn't tell. Hmm. Personally, I still like the water. God, it's close though, man. That is super close. It's like the last test. Really, really close, folks. Either way you go, I think you'd be fine. And like I said, if, if you don't want to put water in your sand itself, put some foil over it, get one of the aluminum pans, put some water in the aluminum pan. That introduces a little bit of humidity into your cooking chamber. It's fabulous, folks. I really didn't have any trouble at all. Uh, the, the, only, the only thing I would say is I had an easier time controlling temps with the water in the sand than I did with the sand alone. I actually had to crack open a second vent to help maintain 250 on the one with the sand because, again, it had water in it. And most of the water had evaporated out of the sand. I mean, the sand's still kind of slushy, but it didn't have a layer of water on top. So, you know, you got that going for you. But, um, folks, I honestly, either way you go, it's a win-win. If you got a Weber Smoky Mountain and you use sand, you're cool. If you use sand and water, even better. If you use water, that's what Weber Smoky Mountain is designed to use. So that's what I'm probably going to still use. I may have to get Karen a uh, second Weber Smoky Mountain so she can cook with some sand in it. <laughs> I'm going to go inside and see if she wants to taste these on camera, but I guarantee you she probably won't. But I wish she would. <laughs> anyway, folks, I appreciate you letting me do this. Thanks for all your feedbacks and your suggestions on doing these tests. This was fun. But again, this is my last test I'm going to do on this sand versus water deal. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Hope it gave you some information to think about it. And uh, y'all give it a try yourself. It's, it's fabulous either way. Honestly, it really is. If you're in cold climates, I definitely suggest you use sand. If you're in the warmer, humid climates, uh, either way, really doesn't matter. I will say, though, that most of the time when you have a humidity, have a humid environment, in your cooking chamber, like humidity is high, you get a lot more uh, smoke ring and you get a lot better bark formation because that humidity allows the smoke to bind to the, the surface of the meat and to the, the rubs that you may have on the meat. It, it's, just, uh, it's just something that helps with the bark. It's good, y'all. I'm fixing to go eat. Thanks again for joining me. If y'all like this kind of stuff, y'all give me some thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe to my channel. I got a lot, a lot of good things coming up, folks, believe me. And, uh, and I'm probably gonna be out of pocket. I'm, the whole month of August and the first part of September, I'm gonna be on the road. So if I don't respond to your comments, I apologize. It's just that I can't. I'm, I don't have a laptop to take with me. I'm just, I'm just living off my cell phone and driving down the, country roads so hope y'all uh, oblige me with that and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I get back in town we'll see y'all soon folks hope you share the video when you do please tell all your friends T-Roy cooks responsibly cheers everybody